Hey guys, welcome back to Talk Nasty Me podcast. Uh, this is your host, Nikki Nasty. Who else? <laughs> I'm really, really excited about today's podcast. Um, I know that times are still very, I don't even want to say strange because they're definitely moving in the direction that they're supposed to be moving into. Um, I'm talking about the protests and the Black Lives Matter movement, but um, my last podcast episode was dedicated to the Black Lives Matter movement and talking about how to be a better ally. And I know that a lot of YouTubers are still not uploading their regular videos or still not uploading podcasts. And that's completely understandable because now is not really a time for normal content and pretending that nothing is happening. However, um, I'm just really, really happy that we're making positive strides. Like, for example, like Minneapolis is planning to at least defund their police department. It's just like positive things like that that really go to show that things are being changed by protests and petitions and donations and everything else that's happening. So I'm very, very happy about that. It makes me feel very hopeful for this week and moving forward, honestly. But um, I don't want to sit here and act like, oh my God, everything is back to normal. Let's get back to talking nasty or whatever. Like, no, that's not what I want to do. However, I did hear that some of you want to see a little bit more normal content or content that could at least make them smile in times like these. Um, But I don't want to stray away from what is really, really important right now. So once again, if you do have any funds to donate Um, to any organization that I'm going to be listing in the description of this podcast. Uh, Definitely sign petitions still. It's so important. And protest if you can, but please be safe. Um, Please do so because that's still so important right now and it should not be dying down whatsoever. I think it's only getting stronger, to be honest. I saw the protest in Philly today. Insane in a good way, but I'm really excited to see like what's to come and what kind of change is going to happen in this country. Um, but yeah, I did want to give you guys kind of a normal-ish podcast, though, to help you smile a little bit because I've had kind of a hard week, but like it's good. I feel like a lot of change is happening also in my personal life, but all for the better. And so it's very exciting for me. Some of you may have seen on my social media that I kind of talked about how I haven't been able to be active, especially with videos, um, even if it was an appropriate time to upload, and especially with the podcasts and everything else, I just haven't been able to be as proactive as I want to be because there is some stuff going on with my family's health and everything, um, but everything's okay and things are looking like they're going up. So that's very exciting. If you're watching the video form of this podcast on YouTube, I'm so sorry that I did not upload last week's video portion. A lot has happened this week to me, and I just genuinely have not had the mental capacity at all to be editing a video, and it honestly slipped my mind for a few days. I didn't even hand in my homework assignment for my online class, and for the first time ever in my last three years of college, I'm taking classes currently at our community college because it's so much cheaper than taking them at freaking Temple University. So I'm doing that. And uh, for the first time ever, a professor has reached out to me and been like, hey, I saw that you didn't submit this assignment. Just want to see, are you okay? Because I'll give you an extension. Let me know. And I was like, wow, this is the first time that a professor has ever done that. I was like, yes, shit is going on. Thank you so much for reaching out. I really appreciate this. She was so kind to me. I told her that was the first time that someone has reached out to me and that I really appreciate her. And she's like, that makes me sad now. And I was like, no, don't be sad. I really like appreciate you. So um, I've just kind of been behind on everything, but I needed a much needed break, which I gave myself. I feel better. I feel on top of the world. Not quite, but getting there. If you're watching the video form of this podcast, though, um, you might be seeing me. Maybe I don't look that bad on camera. However, I did try and self-tan because I have not been outside much in the last three months. Uh, Yeah, I could have. I have a small, tiny backyard that I could have just like laid out in, but I haven't. I don't want to get skin cancer. Also, um, I just kind of, I miss my freckles. I have freckles when I go outside a lot, especially when I go to the beach or something. Can't really go to the beach right now. So I gave myself faux freckles with self-tanner and give myself a little bronze moment up in my hairline. Um, It does not look as good as it did this morning and even last night. It just kind of, it does just doesn't look that good. So anyway, if you're seeing that, I'm sorry. Um, Today's episode though, uh, today's podcast episode 
It's about funny stories about love. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to be titling this podcast yet, but it's just funny, funny boy stories, funny love stories, okay? Because uh, I had a situation that happened this Thursday that just made me want to talk about this so bad, and I love telling stories. I don't, I'm not going to say I'm a great storyteller, but I, I think I'm a pretty good storyteller, okay? And by that, I mean, I just give way too many details, and my friends always get sick of me. Um, but I like, I like when I tell stories. I, I like hearing my own voice. So I'm going to tell you some stories. I'm going to tell you what, uh, I'm, so I'm going to give you some stories and I'm going to tell you about what happened. <laughs> um, so I'm going to give you some stories. I'm going to tell you what happened this Thursday because it was hilarious. I tweeted about it briefly and a lot of you were like, please, well, not a lot of you. It was one person. <laughs> asked for a story time it's just the tiny little people in my head they're like please give us story time and I was like sure I'll do it okay let's just jump into it okay let's just jump in this is normally the time where podcasters would have like an ad break but I don't have ads in my podcast yet so there's going to be no ad so let's just jump into it so Thursday I have to go to the hospital very early in the morning someone in my family has to get surgery it's whatever. It's fine. Everything is going according to plan. Everything is all good. Everything is fine. Um, my family member goes into surgery. All good. Whatever. I'm kind of stressed out. I wasn't planning on staying in the hospital at all, to be honest. Um, I was planning on going home in the meantime. I didn't even think that they would like let me in the back for like the prep and everything, but they did. So I got to the hospital at like 7 a.m., parked super bad. I parked like on the line of like the parking spot and I was like, it's fine. It's seven in the morning. No one's even here yet. There's no cars around me. So I am just gonna uh, not worry about it because I'll literally be out in like 20 minutes. It's not gonna be a big deal. Wrong. I was at the hospital for 12 hours. I thought I was gonna be there for 20 minutes. It's fine. I just didn't know how much they would actually let me, you know, what's the word? I don't know. Mary, Mary around, Mary gander, gander around the hospital. So yeah, I don't know why I got Mary into my head, but I didn't know how much they would let me gander around the hospital. So, um, but then when I got there and then my family member was like, you know what? I kind of would feel better if you stayed. And I was like, no biggie, I will stay. So the nurse was like telling me all the instructions of like when I have to come back to the hospital. And then I was like, you know what, nurse, you know what? I'm going to stay. Okay. I think when my family member is in surgery, I'm just going to go get like lunch from the cafeteria. There's bound to be vegan food. Like I'm just going to go get some. She's like, great. I'll get you a coupon. So she gives me a $5 coupon. And I was like, okay, sweet. There's probably sushi at this hospital. And to be honest, hospital sushi is not like terrible, like for a veggie roll, like not bad in my experience, in my experience of hospital sushi. So I was like, fine. All right, I'll, I'll take you up on this offer. So my family member goes into surgery, kind of stressed. Um, I kind of smell because <laughs> I didn't get to shower because I imagined I would shower when I came back from the hospital. Um, I'm in sweats. My hair is just tied back, no makeup. You know, I it's not that I don't feel confident in myself, but I was just looking stressed and greasy and I was eating sushi and a, a vegetarian spring roll with my hands. And I got kombucha. It was amazing. It was a great fruit flavor. It was not by GT Dave. I'm so sorry. I swear if he's listening to this, I love you, GT. I'm, I didn't mean to cheat on your kombucha, but, and whatever. So I'm sitting there, I'm eating my lunch. I'm thoroughly enjoying myself when suddenly this nurse comes up to me. <laughs> this nurse, I'm sorry if you can hear that. There's a train passing by, but <laughs> this nurse comes up to me and he's standing by me. I know he's a nurse because, um, well, how did I know he's a nurse? I think I, I, think I uh, subconsciously know scrub colors. So he's a nurse and he's standing right by me and he looks at me and he's like, hey, um, are, are those, are those drinks good? And like points to my kombucha and I don't have a mask on because I'm eating and he does. And I was like, oh my God, this is awesome. Like, oh my God, kombucha is the best. You should totally get one. He's like, really? Like, what does it taste like? And I was like, ah, I don't know. Just kind of like soda, just with a twist. I don't know. I, I don't know how to describe it. It's super good. He's like, isn't it just like 
fermented tea? I was like, yeah, it's great. It has probiotics. I'm trying to impress this nursing student. I'm like, I know what my probiotics are. And so I'm like, yeah, dude, go get one. The grapefruit flavor is like super duper good. He's like, cool. I'm expecting for this man to walk away. I I thought I was impressing like an older dude, not like impressed, but like, I don't know. I thought it was like a legit nurse who wanted to know something about the kombucha. So I was like, here's your information, sir. But he stands there. And I want to go back to eating my spring roll, but he's just standing there. And so I'm like, okay, sir. Um, and so he's like, yeah, so uh, how's your semester going? And I'm like, wait, does this guy think that he knows me? <laughs> like, does he think that I go to school with him? Because I think he might be a nursing student. Anyway, um, and I said, uh, my semester, I mean, I'm not really like in a semester. I mean, I am technically because I'm taking online classes, but he doesn't know that. And so I was like, oh, well, I mean, I'm not in school right now. And I could tell he was nervous. I, you know, when you can just tell when a guy is nervous, I could just tell. And so he's like, okay, okay. Yeah, that's, that's great. I was like, yeah. He's like, what's your name? I said, Nicole, what's yours? And let's give him the name Tim. So Tim goes, nice to meet you, Nicole. Yeah, I said, yeah. And I go back to eating my food, and he just stands there for another second, and then he walks away, and he sits behind me with his friends. I hear him. So I, like, immediately start texting my friends, and I was like, dude, why did this nurse just hit on me? Maybe you might be sitting at home listening to this and be like, he was not hitting on you, Nicole, but, like, he was. Why would you go from talking about kombucha to my semester to asking for my name? He doesn't give a shit about the kombucha at this point. Like, I know he doesn't. I knew. I, I know he does not care about the kombucha. He didn't even go back and get one. You know what I mean? He just, like, went and sat down with his friends. Like, he had no intentions of getting a kombucha. So, like, texting all my friends, I was like, what the fuck? That was, like, weird. Like, whatever. I can't believe I just got hit on by a nurse while my family member is in surgery and I'm concerned and I'm greasy. Anyway, I like take this photo of myself. I'll put it up on the screen if you're watching the YouTube version. It's so cool that I can do that now. But I like send that photo to my friend. I go back to eating and literally while I like sent that photo and I have food in my mouth, he pops up next to me again. He pops up next to me again. And he's like, yeah, so like what? Fuck, what did he say? He said, he said, what? Oh, he said, what year are you? Like, what year are you in college? And I said, oh, I, I'm going to be a senior like this fall. And he's like, okay, cool. And then he said, like, what school do you go to? And, and I said, oh, Temple. He's like, oh, no way. And I said, yeah. <laughs> it was just so awkward. Whatever. We're just standing there. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm in nursing school. Like, we're just doing our rotations. I don't really know what that means. But I was like, that's awesome. I'm so happy for you. And he's like, yeah, um, Nicole, I, I just got to say that, like, I, I saw you from across the hospital cafe and I thought that you were the most gorgeous girl in the entire world. And I was like, wow, that was really fucking bold. I didn't say that, but I was like, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I like, I'm quickly putting my mask on because like I'm done eating my food I literally, he caught me in the worst moment because I was literally done eating my food. Maybe he knew that I was almost done, but he has his mask off. We're both mask off. And I was like, oh my, I don't want to do this right now. I don't know. And this was before restrictions were lifted, like quite literally the day before restrictions were lifted in my county. And so I'm quickly putting my mask back on. And he's like, Nicole, um, I I actually started writing a poem for you. I said, what? (laughs) What? I don't think I said that, but in my head I did. He's like, I started writing a poem for you. Um, and uh, can I read it to you? And I I think, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I was awake for so many hours at this point. I, I should have just stopped him and been like, no, I have a boyfriend. No, thank you. But I think I was just in a haze of me being tired. Also, me not knowing what to say or what to do. I was uncomfortable. And also, low-key meeting, me needing some entertainment, all right? I had a family in surgery. I was alone in a hospital to gander. I, I needed some entertainment. And I said, sure, read me your poem. So he like goes to see, I can see that there's like a doctor sitting like a few seats over from me to my right, like looking at me, like what the fuck is going on right now? Like watching this all unfold and my eyes are like so wide. And anyway, so he comes back, he like sits down next to me. I don't know if his friends are still sitting at the table at this point, but he sits down next to me 
And I thought that he was going to like read it off a piece of paper or his like phone or something, but he starts reciting this poem to me off the top of his head. Something along the lines of, um, yeah, so I just started writing this. Um, okay. So, um, I always knew that I would find the love of my life, um, while sitting in the cafe of the hospital. And that's when I saw my beautiful Nicole with brunette hair and I knew that she would be mine. I long for you, Nicole. I need you like a human needs food and water. I thirst for you. I have hunger for you, something like that. And then he was like, um, I need you like Dracula needs blood. I, and then he laughs and goes, I would know because I'm a nurse. I see a lot of blood. And uh, he's like, I, I knew that you would be mine. And uh, I need you, Nicole. And then he looks at me and goes, what do you think? And I'm like laughing. But I have my mask on. But it's very obvious I'm laughing. And I was like, oh, wow, um, that is very nice. He's like, yeah. I said, um, I, that's so nice of you. But I do have a boyfriend. And he's like, oh, my God. This is so awkward. I am so sorry. I'm going to go run away now. Literally, like, sprints out of the cafe. Like, hurriedly throws all this trash into the garbage and, like, runs out of the cafe of the hospital. And I just was left sitting there. And I was like, was that real? Like, did that actually, did that actually happen? It was hilarious. And I, like, texted all my friends. And I was like, what the fuck is my life right now? Like, it's slowly getting back to normal. Like, if anybody knows me, they would know, like, that's some shit that just would happen to Nicole. It's just, it's fun. It's cool. But it's just, it's just believable that it would happen to me. I do feel bad that I even let him read the poem. I don't want to humiliate him ever. He'll never have to see me again in, in his life ever. And I was so mad because I was like, shit, I just want to tell my family member about this story because this is hilarious. I can't wait to tell them when they wake up. So... I'm like texting all my friends. I'm like texting my boyfriend. I was like, you'll never believe what just happened to me. And I texted him previously. I was like, dude, there's, I don't call my boyfriend dude. Well, sometimes I do. <laughs> and I was like, this nurse is hitting on me. And then he was like, no way. And then, yeah, <laughs> that was just a funny story that happened on Thursday. And then when my family member woke up from surgery, I was like, oh my God, dude, you'll never guess what happened. And they're like still high from surgery. And I was like, this nurse came up to me and was flirting with me so then I had to repeat the story to the other nurses that were helping my family member and they were like what who is this dude like what did he look like what was his like was he cute and I was like listen I'm sure he's cute for someone but that someone just isn't me but I'm sure he's cute to someone and um he's a nice dude just like it's just very forward very very forward I think I would have appreciated it a lot more if somebody wrote a poem about me, but it wasn't so like, I need you, Nicole. I knew I would find you. I thirst for you. I need you like Dracula needs blood. That Nah, that's a little bit too far, okay? I would have liked it if someone were like, you have nice, pasty, pale skin. I like it. It reminds me of some of my sick patients that I have sometimes. Your hair is greasy like the... I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, that's just like a nicer poem to give to someone that you don't really know. It just wasn't really my style for him to keep telling me that I'm the one for him because I am not the one for him. But uh, it was a good effort. He was very nervous. So I give him a lot of props. But um, that was very fun. And then this isn't a boy story, but then I'm like in the waiting room waiting for my family member. And a nurse comes up to me and asks me like who I'm waiting for, what's my relationship to them and everything. And then is like staring at my sweatshirt. If you guys watch my videos, you probably know what sweatshirt I'm talking about. It's a gray sweatshirt that says America on it with a bald eagle because I thrifted it. And it's like my favorite sweatshirt in the entire world. It's so comfortable. I wear it for happy times, sad times, frustrating times all the time. I just, it's my sweater for all occasions and I'm wearing it. And this nurse like gets really close to me and she's like, huh? And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's embroidered. I could tell that she was just like staring at like the stitching of it. And, and the, the, the like emblem or the embroidery is like right on my chest. 
she takes her hand and just like starts rubbing my chest and she's like huh i thought it was real fur or something i'm like what the fuck is going on here crazy ass hospital it was great they took care of my family very well everything turned out awesome but just a weird experience Okay, so this next story happened to me at Chipotle when I still work there. I might have talked about this on my YouTube channel. However, I don't care. It's a story that demands to be repeated, okay? So this story started off with me working. I was underage, okay? And I was working a night shift. Night shift being like not overnight or anything, but like I think I was working like from 5 to like 11.30 p.m. or something. So I'm working, I'm doing my thing, and that day I decided to wear dark lipstick. I liked to wear like really nice makeup at the time, like in high school. Like I really liked to do my makeup, like to do my eyeshadow, like to do lipstick and stuff. And then especially when I was a cash register, I would when I was a cash register, when I was a cashier, they called it cash at Chipotle. Like I'm on cash, but when I was on cash, I would like to dress up and like look really cute however I could, because that would just get us more tips. And then also, um, it wouldn't melt off from being like hot from being by the grill or anything. So like, I would just like to dress cute so that I could come home with a fat stack of cash. Okay. So I am all prettied up, whatever. I'm working the night shift and there's this dude who works there. He was a nice guy. He was very nice. However, I did. (laughs) This is funny. I I told him about how like oftentimes there are a lot of people who come into Chipotle and start working and then they'll just disappear and then just never come back to work again. I was like, I hope you're not one of those dudes. Like, I hope that you don't just like ghost us suddenly and never come back. He's like, oh my God, I would never do that. And then he did that. Anyway, it was a fun guy while it lasted, but he is standing there and it's like his like second day of work and him and I are just like hitting it off. We're like cool friends, whatever. And he's like, hey, Nicole, that one customer who was like, stumbling and like slurring his words he's like staring directly at you and we had these like high chairs like they were like benches like stools and this dude is dead ass staring directly at me like from the stools and he was there for like two hours at this point and I was like oh god oh my god I thought it makes me uncomfortable he's like yeah I think he's like drunk so like it's probably not that big of a deal or anything I was like well maybe not <laughs> so I go out and like part of Cash's job is to like clean up the dining room and like go sweep whatever so I take my little broom out there we're like gonna close I don't know in like an hour or two I think we close at like nine at the no we close at 10 at the time I think maybe we close at 10 and why do I remember that (laughs) but we're closing at 10 and so I'm taking my like little broom and I'm like sweeping and stuff and he go this this man comes up to me and he goes I have I have a question for you and I'm like yo what's up he's like what time are you like here until And I thought that he meant like, what time is everyone here until like, what time do we close? And so I was like, oh, sir, we're open until 10 p.m. Like, we'll be here till 10. He's like, all right, so you're going to be here till 10. And I was like, "Uh, yep, yep, we're going to be here till 10. Continue sweeping, whatever. Time goes by, maybe like half an hour. I go back out sweeping again. And uh, (laughs) he goes, hey, I, I, I have a question for you again. It's like, what's up, dude? This guy is clearly inebriated. He goes, um, so this might be kind of like a weird question, but uh, I have this rental Audi <laughs> out in the parking lot. And uh, I was just wondering if like when you get out of work, if you want to like go for a spin. And I was like, oh, that's what this is about. You want to know what time I get out. <laughs> Oh my God. So (laughs) I get so scared. I literally feel like myself like shaking and like all the blood just like immediately leaves my face because I'm so terrified of men. And I was like, "Uh, I'm 16. (laughs) This guy's like in his 30s or 40s. And he's like, oh, I am so sorry. I thought you were much older than that. And I was like, no. And he just leaves. First of all, multiple things wrong with this sir you're inebriated second of all i don't think that he came in an audi something tells me that he did not have an audi third of all why would you lie about having a rental audi like if like if you're gonna make up that you have this fancy car why wouldn't you say that you have 
that you own an Audi? Why would you say that you have a rental Audi? You know what I mean? It just doesn't really make sense. Why are you picking up girls from Chipotle? Why would you not go to the bar? Just so many questions. And I like immediately like ran back, told my new friend. I was like, oh my God, it happened. This is crazy. Told all like my coworkers. And now whenever I see an Audi, I think of that man. Just kidding. I genuinely don't even know what an Audi looks like. I think it has something to do with Mercedes. Don't make fun of me. I just don't care about cars like that. But um, yeah, it's just like an inside joke between all of my little Chipotle pals about this rental Audi man. Crazy times. Very funny. (laughs) The next story also involves a Chipotle boy. Well, this is a genuine boy, not a man. So do you ever like know when you're about to talk to someone like you see someone and you just know that that person is going to like say something to you? Because I do. I get that feeling very often. And so I'm sitting there on cash once again, looking cute, whatever. It's daytime now. It's not nighttime. And these two boys are like coming through the Chipotle line, whatever. And one of them catches my eye and I was like, oh my God, that guy's kind of cute. It's not every day that I will find a guy cute. I was like newly single. I was feeling hot and I was like, wow, this guy's really, really cute. I might be bold. I might, I might. I was hoping that he would be bold first. So I'm like waiting for him to come up to the cash register. I'm like super nervous. We like keep making eye contact and he says to me and he's like, um, hey, do you like a lot of people give you compliments here. And I was like, (laughs) no, (laughs) why? He goes, oh, that's just like crazy to me because like you're so gorgeous. And I was like, ah, you think so? (laughs) I I don't think I said that, but I was just like shocked. I was like, wow, thank you. And so whatever, I give him his meal and then He goes and sits down with his friend, and uh, his friend doesn't say anything to me. But However, his friend does look very familiar. His friend looks very familiar. And I remember, like, sprinting back to, like, my managers in the office and be like, oh, my God, this super cute guy, he's over there, and uh, he was so nice to me, and oh, my God, and, like, whatever. It's, like, not very common for me to, like, be, like, fangirling. Not fangirling, but, like, swooning over a boy. So I'm like waiting and I'm like, maybe he'll give me his number or something. Like maybe something will happen out of this. And uh, they leave. They leave Chipotle. I was like, it's okay. They often come back. They always come back. And this boy starts feeding the birds with the remainder of his rice in his rice bowl. And I just fell in love with this guy. I was like, that is so nice. A humanitarian. He loves animals. What a good person. And so... Um, I fell in love in that moment. I knew that that guy was the right one for me until I told my friends about him. I described exactly what he looks like and, uh, comes to find out that he goes to my high school. Uh, I had no idea because my high school is very large. Yeah. You see someone new every single day and he is a year younger than me. Maybe this is giving out too much information. That's not like he's listening to this. Who cares? And turns out he's a year younger than me. My friend finds this all out. She like knows him personally. Uh, And he goes to my school. You're younger than me. And his friend looked familiar because he goes to my high school. And it turns out this dude has had a girlfriend for like the last three years. He's still in a relationship. I don't know if like current day 2020, if he's still in this relationship. But when he said that to me at Chipotle, he was literally in a relationship. And that hurt. That shit hurt so bad because I was like, wow, I really thought that this could be something because I'm a vegan and you just fed the birds and like that meant a lot to me. And you also called me pretty. And then you didn't immediately even give me your number. Like you were just kind of playing hard to get. And I just felt like we had a connection um, because I felt like you would talk to me and then you did. And, um, and then you just kind of like hurt me because you had a girlfriend this whole time. I don't know if she ever found out. I, maybe I should have told her. Maybe my friend told her. I have no idea. I really don't know. And then I, I think I remember seeing that kid around school then like later on. He was not that cute in school attire, but in Chipotle, very cute. But anyway, that was a lost cause. <laughs> My next story is uh, throwing it back to middle school. I, I, I hate how I talk about 
school like middle school and high school so often in my videos but like just nothing that exciting is happening to me present time for me to be giving you active stories you know I've been cooped up at home and I'm reliving all these stories in my head but this one's good I think this one's a fun story well it's kind of scary well okay so I like this guy okay I liked him for a very long time like a super long time like I really thought this was the boy for me I did not get over him for a very long time and he was like one of my close friends and this was when like Facebook was like popping off and everything but it was like when Facebook it didn't really have like the message version it just had like the chat version like it like you couldn't go back and look at your old messages like if they were in chat they would like pretty much disappear or maybe they didn't and I'm just dumb but they didn't they weren't like saved immediately so I came up with this grand scheme plan, my six, literally sixth grade of middle school, to um, hack into this kid's Facebook account and message his best friend, which was also my friend, and ask this friend, hey, remember that time that I told you that I liked Nicole? And then when he, his friend would say, yes, I do remember that, then that would confirm that he does indeed like me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Something got stuck in my throat and that was honestly, I just saw like my life flash before my eyes. Anyway, I think it was garlic. And so then, uh, if he didn't say, like if, if the dude said like, no, I don't remember you saying like you liking Nicole, then that would mean that... <laughs> He doesn't like me and my plan would kind of fail. So, um, you know, I did what was right and I almost paid for a service that would help me hack into this kid's Facebook account. It didn't work. I did not pay any money. However, I thought about it for a hot second. Um, and I don't, I don't think I ever told anyone about that. Well, I told my friends now, but back in the day, I was like hardcore sleuthing to find out if I could potentially hack into this kid's Facebook account. Um, turns out I told him over like winter break and I was like, Hey, I actually do like you. And he was like, no way. Maybe after winter break, we could like work something out. And I was like, Oh my God. Yes. The boy that I'm in love with is potentially giving me a chance. This is amazing. Turns out, um, he didn't care about me, um, whatsoever. And then we came back to school and, um, my friend, oh, I remember he like whispered in my ear, like at lunch the one day, he's like, do all these people here like know that you like me? Cause it was like all of our friends. And I was like, yeah, they do. He was like, okay, like whatever. Didn't say anything about it. And I was like, he, 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 maybe we'll work something out still. Like we're after winter break. And then, um, I remember one day my friends asked, well, they said, well, you two would be such a cute couple or something like that. Like my friends were good friends. And this kid said, ew, that's disgusting. I like Nicole like a sister. Broke my heart. He knew what that would do to me. He knew that that would hurt me. He knew that that would break my heart. And he said it anyway, because he's disgusting. Anyway, he broke my heart when he told me, even when I did like him, he told me that he swapped gum with this girl underneath the bleachers at a basketball game. Ew. And like, also we were in the sixth grade. I don't know how he was getting so much action back then. He was definitely kind of like low key a liar, but at the same time, I kind of don't think so. So that honestly really broke my heart to this day. But what can you do? Anyway, I think he's doing well now. He like hit me up a few years ago and my heart skipped a beat, but yeah, nothing since. <laughs> um, this is also a stupid ass story from middle school. Um, I lied to my friends that um, I met a guy at a wedding because I did go to a wedding. And back then, like when you're younger, I feel like weddings are so fun. Like when you're a kid, weddings are so fun for you because like if there's people your age, you can make weddings like such a blast. I haven't been to a wedding in so many years and I have not had a lot of fun in my life clearly because I'm not going to anyone's weddings. Someone invite me to their wedding. Well, as opposed to I'm officiating a wedding. It got postponed. But anyway, that's besides the point. Um, I'm so excited about that, by the way. I'm going to have a lot of fun at that wedding. But um, yeah, so um, I told all my friends that I went to this wedding and then I met a boy 
and he's like a family friend of the people whose wedding I went to because they weren't family. They were family friends. So just this complete stranger boy. And then he's a YouTuber. This was back then when I was like heavily obsessed with YouTube, like heavily. Still am, but heavily. And um, I said, I don't know if you know who this person is, but if you're my age, then you probably do. I told all my friends that I kissed and am now dating because I met a boy at a wedding that I am now dating Sam Potterf. Sam Potter from O2L. I didn't even have a crush on that kid. Out of all the people in O2L, I loved JC Kalen so hard. I loved him so immensely. Um, but I couldn't say that I was dating JC Kalen because he was older. I said that I was dating Sam Potterf and that he lied about his age online and that he was actually younger and that he was just like a year or two older than me and that we kissed and that he was my first kiss and that that was my boyfriend and everything and that we were dating in long distance and I would print out fake photos of us texting back and forth and then one girl called me out on it and she's like wait isn't your text supposed to be on the right hand side not on the left hand side I don't know why I did this this is so disgusting of me I hate myself so bad I was such a liar why did I do that oh I think I was just embarrassed because of that kid after breaking my heart this was 100% after that kid broke my heart and said that I was like a sister to him and I was like fuck you I'm dating a youtuber now anyway everyone found out that's not him. And then it got really awkward when I think one person still believed me about the whole situation. I was like, well, we just parted separate ways because we could never see each other. We didn't have any photos together. And so um, it down the line when he got married when we were in high school, that must have been really awkward. But good thing that I never brought that up. Anyway, this is me coming clean about my mistakes when I was younger. I'm sorry to anybody who believed that lie for a split second. <laughs> So this story is about an actual YouTuber. <laughs> it's about FoosyTube. I kind of talked to you guys about my obsession with FoosyTube back in the day, but I was like a hardcore fan, like very, very, very big fan. Sorry, I just like slammed myself into my desk. Anyway, um, I need a more stable setup here. Regardless, I was a very big FoosyTube stan. Uh, my entire Twitter was dedicated to him. I had a YouTube video that hit like over 100k views because I posted a video of him being on Ellen. I loved him so much. And I think I just like really liked him because I am Middle Eastern and I wasn't in touch with my Middle Eastern side. So he made a lot of like Middle Eastern videos like in the beginning and it was just like really cool because I felt like I related to somebody or like another part of my culture that I was never able to experience myself. So I got to experience it through him. And I think that's why I related to him. So well, not related, but like he was a way a much older man than I was. He was in college and I was in middle school. So I just really liked him. And he spoke to me and it was so it was such such an obsession like my I had a folder on my computer of like secret photos of him like not secret photos but like rare photos of him and I would tweet at him all the time and I'd go on his you know and talk to him and screenshot every single tweet that he ever replied to or hearted or anything and then he followed me on Twitter which was like massive and so he like knew of me okay at the time like he knew of his like small fan base not small but he had like around a hundred thousand subscribers and so he knew of his like fan base and few people who were like big stands and so I was in church I remember that morning I was in church and it was like some special day where it was like on this day like whatever you ask for like you shall receive like just pray really hard to this saint or something like that I'm not religious now, but at the time I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to pray that I have one more interaction with FoosyTube. Like, I just want to have one big solid interaction with him. That's really what I want. And I prayed for it so hard in church. And then I came home and I saw on Twitter that Yousef, that, that was his name, FoosyTube. Well, it's still his name, but <laughs> Yousef was going to be on a Chicago radio station and he was going to be like answering calls from fans. And I was like, no fucking way. No fucking way. So all you had to do was just keep calling into this number until like finally it answered. So like it was busy every single time. I'm calling ferociously. 
I recorded a video of it. Like I'm literally recording just in case he answers. This is literally like an hour after getting out of church. And I'm calling nonstop to this man. I'm like, fuck, answer, 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 answer. And then it rings. And then they're like, all right, Nicole, you're on the Chicago radio station. What do you have to say to Yusuf Erekat? I freeze. I like don't know what to even say. I just started stating everything about myself in hopes that he would want to marry me. I'm literally like, hi, I'm, I'm such a big fan of you. I'm not even like full Middle Eastern. I'm like half Middle Eastern. I'm, I'm 12 years old and I love you so much and I just want to marry you. And I, I know I'm not Muslim, but I just really, really love you. And I just really want to be with you. And uh, uh, I'm like freaking out, hyperventilating. And then the Chicago like radio station anchor, whatever. He's like, oh, what do you say, Yusef? What do you say about taking Nicole's hand in marriage? And then Yusef's like, I'll meet you at the altar, like some dumb shit. And I swoon. And that was the peak of my life. I was like, I just got noticed by my favorite YouTuber in the entire world. I just talked to him on the radio station and he just said that he would marry me. We talked on the phone for like a few minutes. It was intense. I, it embarrasses me to this. Like now that I'm thinking about it, I was on a radio station. People were literally driving back. People were driving back from church and I'm over here like hyperventilating me like, I'm 12 and I love you. But that was me. That was me. And I was on people's, in people's radios, in their cars. I'm embarrassing, but uh, that was like a huge moment for me. And then I recorded it and put it on the internet and then I cherished it. And then I came into school and I was like, yeah, Fuzzy Tube noticed me. And then I kind of stopped being a fan of him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this next story, once again, me being creepy stalkerish as fuck. I do not condone stalkerish behavior. I don't condone it whatsoever. However, I did have some weird tendencies in the past that I should not have done. I I admit it is wrong of me. I should not have been so creepy when it comes to seeking out boys, but I feel like we all get a little bit crazy when we're young and we don't understand what is going on. And we don't understand boundaries and all that shit. Not an excuse. Not an excuse at all. But uh, nonetheless, I was obsessed with this guy. <laughs> and Tian, do I even want to say the story? No. No. Okay, so this next story is also about wanting a guy who didn't want me who didn't give a shit about me <laughs> so there was this one guy that's my freshman year of high school okay and so um I just wow the football team what can I say I was falling in love with all of them even though they were all jerks and and it, ne- it never worked out regardless uh this guy was on the football team and he caught my eye from when I was in training for field hockey season and I sucked there's this beautiful, this man was literally like 6'5", and we were freshmen in high school. And I remember seeing this. This is being, I'm being way too specific. Somebody could be listening from my high school and being like, Nicole, you are doing too much right now. Regardless, I saw this guy in the summer, and I was like, oh my god, he's so cute, but he probably smells like shit because he plays f- football. And uh. Anyway, I wanted this boy. Okay, I really, really, really did. And so, um... Turns out he was in my health class when school started, and I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is amazing. So I start talking to him here and there, but he doesn't really want anything to do with me because he's a jock. And, um, but then he kind of like, you know, talks to me a little bit about field hockey. I pretend to be a lot better than I am, and I start catching feelings for this kid. He gives me his number, and I was like, desperate. I was texting him way too often. Well, not really. I think I texted him like legit like two times a week and he would never ever respond. Never text me back ever. He definitely was like, oh, this dumb bitch. She texted me again. But I just, I really thought that he might like me. I don't know why I thought that. Well, I do know why. He was friends with this one girl in the class and I was like, hey, I 
I like have a crush on this guy. And she's like, dude, I think that he like actually likes you. Don't worry. This girl was not trying to like take him from me or anything or like lead me on in a negative way. She was a lesbian. She is a lesbian. And so she was like, no, Nicole, go for it. Like, I think he might like you back. Like seriously, like the way that he talks about you, he thinks that you're so pretty. I think he might even want to take you to homecoming. And I was like, no way. I would love to go to homecoming with him. He's so beautiful. Um, except a lot of girls in the school were like flocking after him and all wanted him and he didn't want me but then like he would give me a lot of attention when we would be in like the trainer's office like when he broke his arm during football anyway he was just a beautiful man and I recognized it a little bit too much and I remember one time there was this Polish student who came from Poland to America and started playing football or whatever. And I was like, there's a Polish kid here. Like, I want to talk to him because there was not a lot of Polish people, especially like no one who spoke Polish, like in my high school. And so I remember one day, like after field hockey practice and after football practice, I like am standing there and I'm talking to this Polish kid in Polish. And like, it's just so cool because like we're speaking in Polish to each other and the entire football team is like crowded around us. And you're like, who's this girl? She's foreign. And like, I was like feeling so special. And then my one true love, tall man, he was like, wow, this girl can speak another language. I thought that he would be like enticed by me. No. Um, my heart was shattered, broken, withered away when I found out that he was moving to Florida very quickly, very soon. My heart broke. Um, he's moving to Florida. I can't go to homecoming with him. And um, I, I remember on his last day of school going to like his class and waving goodbye. I remember him giving me a hug was like hugging a tree and uh, me saying goodbye to him and I was like wow there goes my true love Uh, he didn't give a shit about me he had so many girlfriends like literally so many he did not care about me goes to Florida whatever I get into a relationship within the next couple years I'm severely unhappy in this relationship I get a nice little dm from Mr. Tall Tree Man from Florida He's playing for an amazing school in Florida. Like he looks like he's with like D1 athletes in high school. They're all very big, tall tree men. And he looks like he's loving his life. And he looks like he's literally going to be the next biggest athlete in the NFL. And I was like, wow, this guy's reaching out to me. And he's like, hey, I miss you so much. How are you doing? And I have to ignore it because I am in a relationship that is very it was abusive and I wanted to get out so bad but obviously I couldn't be messaging this guy I'm in a relationship so I had to leave him on red heartbreaking absolutely heartbreak like it was so bad it made my boyfriend at the time so insecure he was like why is he messaging you what's going on why is he doing that he's so much cuter than me he's so much better than me and I was like I mean you're the one saying it not me um anyway I checked up on him a few months ago he does not look like he's doing so well as I thought he was. Um, literally all of his photos have drugs in them. Not like weed, like drugs, drugs. And uh, I don't know if he's doing so well in his life. And that's okay. It's really okay. However, uh, maybe I could have saved him. Just kidding. No, I couldn't have. But um, I just, I'm sad that he's like now selling drugs when he was like such a star athlete. And I don't know. Ah, didn't even get the guy. <laughs> um, this next story is stupid. This next story is so stupid. Okay, <laughs> if if the people involved in this story are this far into listening to my podcast, dude, don't even come talk to me about this situation because. If you're this far into listening to my podcast, you are a fan of mine. You are a little nasty. You are a little cherub. You are taking part in to talk nasty to me. You are now part of the community. I don't want to hear it. I had a lot of bullies in high school, okay? And so uh, this one dude, he, <laughs> he, I went to middle school with him, okay? And the only reason I'm telling this story is because it's, like, actually so hilarious that it's, like, ridiculous 
and it just has to be included. So went to middle school with this dude, okay, where it's like sixth grade. A lot has happened in sixth grade. We're going on this like massive field trip, and it's like my three best friends, and we're like living it up on this field trip and everything, and I thought it was, I thought it was just the Gerties and I, even though like the it was a, a dude, but whatever. So he, um, like it was like two girls and like one guy. And so the guy decides to tell me on the bus back from our field trip where we had an awesome, amazing time. And we are now singing, I want to be a millionaire by Bruno Mars. He tells me that he's in love with me. I was like, sir, you cannot be in love with me. First of all, you said that you were in love with my friend. I also don't think that you like women. I just do not think so, but that is okay if you do do or don't, but I just don't think so. And it just broke my heart because I felt like mm, our entire friend group was getting broken apart because he liked now two girls and it just was not going to work out. Okay. (laughs) So, um, so then proceeds, um, then a few months before that, So then a few months later, this guy tells us all that he has touched himself to all of the girls in in our friend group. Broke my heart. Broke my actual heart. Because I was so disgusted that this dude who I trusted so much, who, I I don't know, it was just a gross ass situation. And so I was like, all right, gross, whatever. So eighth grade comes around. I think it might be eighth grade. Eighth grade comes around. I'm sitting in math class. We get our progress report. I'm sitting there with my progress report. And he's like, let me see it. It's like, no, it's my progress report. I don't want you to see it. He's like, let me see it. He starts getting aggressive. And I was like, no. So I'm holding it to like my right side of like my face. And he's standing on my left side. He goes to grab it. But in the midst of him going to grab my progress report from my hand, he punches me in the nose. My immediate reaction is to cry because like when your nose gets hit, you just cry. I start crying. He hit me in the nose. Everyone saw it and was like, dude, what the heck? So this guy starts crying and just runs out of the room. That is the last time that we speak. And I was like, what the fuck? This kid just punched me in the nose. I've never gotten punched in the face before. So he eventually, not because of this, I don't think, he starts going to online school. He doesn't come back for the remainder of the year. And then I just remember just not seeing him for like a super long time or something like that. And I remember seeing him freshman year of high school, I think, maybe even sophomore year. And we're like waiting for school to start. And someone pulls me to the side and is like, oh, I want to introduce you to my friend Rick. And I was like, okay, cool. And I noticed that Rick is Rick. And I was like, oh my God, hey dude, you punched me in the face a few years ago. And he got so heated, so angry, and just like left. And I was like, all right, I don't know what that was about because like you did punch me in the face. I'm not like actively mad about it. I think it was a mistake. I'm just mad that you didn't apologize. Anyway, um, a few years later, literally years later, I don't talk to this kid at all, at all. A few years later, um, a bunch of people are coming for me. Uh, wait, no, let me backtrack. So a few years later, I'm working at Chipotle still. And there was somebody in line and like saying hi to me. I think it was like a cute guy. I liked, oh, God, why did I like so many guys? <laughs> it was a cute guy in line. And while I'm like saying hi to this guy, one of my coworkers accidentally punches me in the face, like just like takes her fist back, absolutely did not mean it and just punches me in the face. And it was pretty hard. And she was so apologetic and everything. And I was like embarrassed because it was in front of this guy I liked. And so I tweeted later on and I was like, oh, when you see blah, 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 and you get like punched in the face or whatever. And uh, that was that. Few weeks later, I take a nap. It's like my mom's birthday. I take a nap and I wake up to like five different people attacking me on Twitter for breaking up with my abusive boyfriend because why would I do that? Calling me a masochist, all this like crazy dumb shit that I was not understanding. I was like, what is going on right now? Why are so many people like attacking me on Twitter? So confused. And the kid who punched me in the face in middle school, Rick, replies to my tweet where I make that 
tweet about my coworker punching me in the face. And he was like, oh, well, when I punch you in the face, it's a problem. When your coworker punches you in the face, it's not. Something along those lines. I was like, what the, what is going on right now? What is actually going on? It was just actually hilarious that this, anyway. So, um, Rick, I, I block him. I start arguing with him. I block him. And uh, he like makes this statement on his Twitter and he's like, if anybody sees any tweets um, from Nicole Raffi about me, just let me know because she has blocked me. And uh, then <laughs> I can't escape this guy. I go to college. It's my spring semester of freshman year. I'm chilling. I already hate the fact that people from my high school already go to my college because I know that they don't like me. And I'm sitting in my class and I did not know that this kid went to, well, it was, it was the first day of the spring semester. I'm sitting in this tiny class, literally it's like 20 of us. And he comes in, this kid comes in, Rick comes in. And I was like, Jesus Christ, I can't escape. That's really where the story ends. I just had to like be a whole semester in with this dude and I just try to ignore him as best as possible. And I think I did a pretty good job at it. So, uh, anyway, that was that story. (laughs) I think the last story that I'll leave you with is a very lighthearted one. I mean, they're all lighthearted. None of them are that deep. But uh, I was the takeout specialist at Chipotle, meaning that I did catering orders, meaning that I put all of your food into nice little boxes and I would stack them in your car and I got a raise and I had a special t-shirt and it was super fun. And uh, I was so proud of my position because I was like 16 and I already got promoted. And I was like, fuck yeah, I love this job. This is amazing. I love catering. <laughs> like, and I I think I was dressed really cute that day. So it was like a really busy Saturday or something. It was like I worked at the mall. So the mall was always very packed on Saturdays. And I remember me like restacking napkins and this kid comes up to me. He's like a few years younger than me, definitely. He comes up to me and he's like, hey, I just want to know if like Chipotle caters weddings. And I was like, oh my God, yes, we actually do. I'm the catering specialist. So um, I can actually help you with that if you're planning a catering or if you're planning like a, a, a wedding for somebody, I can actually help you with that. Like, do you want my business card? And all of his friends like start like laughing at the table. And he's like, no, I was just wondering if like they would cater our wedding. And I wanted to be funny back so I was like well I don't think that would be a really good idea because like if it's our wedding how would I cater and also be the bride like you know what I mean like I just feel like that would be too much for me to take on in one day he didn't think it was that funny and he was like okay so can I have your number and I was like no that was it that's really the end of the story the I'm sorry that there was no other like climax I just thought that I was pretty witty and funny there so yeah (laughs) Thank you so much for listening to today's podcast. That's really all the stories that I have about boys. Um, it's really funny that all my interactions with guys genuinely happened when I was in like middle and high school. And then I got to college and I thought that I was going to be attacked by boys. Like I thought that they were all going to love me. Turns out um, I am like a college four. You know what I mean. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm confident in myself and I think I'm an 11 out of 10. However, when you're at college, everyone is so hot. You're just like instantly like get downgraded by a few points. It's fine. It happens to all of us. Okay. Even the the tens there. Yeah, there's still tens. Okay. But I did want to read today's rating and review because I read them at every episode. So make sure to leave a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts app. Um, so I believe this person's name is Rockin' A, and they said two words, chef's kiss. Absolutely incredible. I'm so happy this is a thing. This is so heckin' genuine. I love it. I love you. Thank you so much. (laughs) Once again, thank you guys so much for listening to today's podcast. I hope that you guys have a really, really good week. Please make sure to check out the link that I'm listing in this description to have a lot of resources, like I said, to petitions um, and to donate and also just some more information about how to stay safe at protests, etc. Um, I will catch you guys next Monday. I almost said Sunday. I'll catch you guys next Monday. Make sure to subscribe and uh, follow me on my other social media if you want to. Love you.